So Himachi, it's a pleasure to have you with us. It's an online portal, Saral Bharat, and we are really excited to have you to know your stories about COVID donates and all those things, your experience, your challenges, and all those things. We welcome you to, to our channel, Saral Bharat. Thank we you. hope you will enjoy the episode. Thank you so much for having me on today. I am super excited for this today. Thank you so much, Imashi. So, my first question directly started with you: Ki, how the idea of this Kobe donate started? Like, the like, children of your age is just like more onto games and social media, but you started something really great. How the Kobe donate started? I just wanted to know. Absolutely. So COVID only it started um, actually when I noticed um, the distress and the panic and how upset people were feeling during this pandemic. I think this pandemic has brought about a lot of challenges for everyone all around the globe, and I I wasn't happy seeing this. So the moment I realized. Um, that you know, everyone is going through an incredibly negative time. I wanted to take that negative 19 out of COVID and really replace it with 19 positive individuals who wanted to donate their hair and make a positive difference in society. This sounds really good. Like it's such a new initiative to donate your hair. This is all for the cancer patients. Yes, um, the hair which is donated all goes to cancer patients. Um, and, you know, I feel like our hair is a really a treasured part of us. And losing it, um, of course, um, if we can donate our hair and give a part of ourselves to society, it, it's really a magical feeling. Wow. And with this, I want to add, please let us know brief about what is this COVID donate is all about. Absolutely. How it works. Yes, for sure. So COVID Donate is an initiative which brought 19 individuals from all over the world uh, to donate their hair for cancer patients across 19 days. Um, the aim of the initiative, as I said earlier, was to take the negative 19 out of COVID and replace it with 19 positive people who wanted to donate their hair and make a difference in society. Um, along with the 19 days of hair donations. Uh, I also set up a fundraiser on Yellow Give and I am so happy to say that with the help of everyone we were able to raise over 15,000 dirhams for the Friends of Cancer Patients Society um, so that we could help young cancer patients get through their long and arduous journey of cancer treatment. That sounds so great, like a great, so much of fun you have, uh, so much of fun you have collected with such a short period of span, like it sounds really amazing. Thank you so much, that means a lot to me. So, like, how did the initiative come in your mind, like who motivates you for this? Um, so ever since I was a little girl, uh, my mom, she has always told me that Himakshi, don't just aspire to make a living, but aspire to make a difference. Um, and so it's definitely my mom and my family who really supported me throughout this whole initiative and uh, encouraged me to make this positive change. Uh, my family, well, my elder sister, Janvi, my parents, uh, my grandparents, uh, with anything I take up, they are always by my side and ready to guide me. And truly, COVID donate would not have been a possibility without them. So your family was very happy with this initiative and they supported you a lot. Yes, definitely. Um, it wouldn't have happened without them. And especially the parent support is most important thing. Also, your great grandparents also supported you with your elder sister. Now the whole family of yours supported with you. They were so excited and happy, na? Yes, definitely. <laughs> So uh, is it this like you started with COVID relief? You uh, how you promote your business? Like how you bring the clients to you? Like I just 
in my I mean, like i am on this too like how you uh, encourage the uh, people to bring to donate their hair Yes, so I am actually the hair donation coordinator for the Friends of Cancer Patients Society in Dubai. Um, and so I basically spread the word about hair donation and its positive effects uh, using this platform. And I also uh, raised awareness through my social media account, which is Himakshi Shastri underscore and Covidonate underscore UAE. Um, so through both of these uh, platforms, forms you know i posted about it and it was truly wonderful because i had people reach out to me from different parts of the world and i think it's so wonderful to see um you know when people um who you haven't really uh, you don't know and people especially from different parts of the globe kind of come together for this special cause i think there's something truly magical to that very true So it was something online also. Like I have uh, seen your Instagram posted. There were so many uh, people who were online donating their hair. They just chopped their hairs and they were like, "See, I have also chopped and I have also donated this for the COVID donors." How it's really it's a magical. And how was your experience while working with the COVID donors? Um, it was truly. I would actually say it was indescribable um, just to have people from different parts of the world. Uh, we had people from Miami, different parts of the UAE, uh, Canada, the Caribbean islands coming together, joining hands for um, such an important cause. I think it just made me so happy that there are like-minded youth in this world who really want to make a positive impact. yeah and that's so like that's so we get so much of blessing with uh, doing these kinds of work how was that uh, the cancer patients reacted with when they saw something like this yes um so i do believe that they were very happy and you know when i see other people happy it makes me happy and i am just so happy that we could uh carry out this initiative and bring a smile to their faces if you start something a very good initiative by you face many challenges like even in your normal life if you wanted to start something there are some obstacles there are some challenges that are waiting for you so what was yours Absolutely. Um so I think just like the name of the initiative suggests Covid Donate um at first you know carrying out this initiative during a global pandemic there were definitely a lot of restrictions that were placed um and a lot of guidelines new guidelines which we needed to follow and go by but i do believe that when your passion is incredibly great and your intentions are in the right place the universe just makes what you're going for uh, kind of work out for you and i think that's exactly what happened with covid donate yes there were challenges along the way but i think at the end we were able to achieve what we set out to do mm-hmm. like obstacles are always waiting for you and see uh, now only i was just, i just message you like 130 will have a call and some technical issues are waiting for me you know we <laughs> are there for you you need to be dealing in that so how how i just want to add with that like uh, your personal experience with the covid donators when you see the cancer patients your personal views on that Yes, um my personal view it just brings a smile to my face. I think when you do good, you feel good. Uh when you make other people happy, you yourself feel happy. Um and so just seeing the people, the actual covid donators who donated their hair and of course the cancer patients who were able to receive the hair, both of them uh just made my day and it was a beautiful beautiful feeling. So I just wanted to know how the process started, like uh, how one can enroll with the COVID unit. Yes, for sure. Um, so is this regarding uh, like how I started this campaign or uh, how other people can donate? Oh, 
how you started the campaign and how one can join your campaign. Okay, perfect. Um, so this hair donation uh, process and campaign began on my 12th birthday. Um, and I remember feeling uh, I like to do something special on my birthday every year. Um, and I had very long hair uh, on my 12th birthday. And so I decided to donate 12 I inches. I saw your post on Instagram. I saw your post on Instagram. You have such a long hair. Yes. Um, so I decided to donate 12 inches of my hair uh, for cancer patients on my 12th birthday. But then as I started doing some more research into this kind of campaign and the hair donation process, um, I realized that it takes eight to nine donations to make just one wig for a cancer patient. And as soon as I found that out, I knew instantly that I didn't want to be the only one donating, but I wanted to get my family, friends, people from all different communities around the world uh, to donate their hair for the special cause too. Um, and so I set up an email, I coordinated with the Friends of Cancer Patients Society, and now I am super happy to say that we have collected over 500 donations in the span of uh, a year and a half. In this span of time? Um, so not exactly during COVID. My hair donation um, like process started a little bit before that. Uh, but yes, in total, we have collected more than 500 donations. That's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so I'm much. I'm so happy. Like I am literally so happy. Like I really want now. I'm like I really wanted to donate my hair for the cancer patients. So with this, I have just wanted to know how like one individual can enroll this campaign. Like is this campaign now uh, continue or is this for this 19 days? Um, no, so COVID on 8 was a 19 day initiative, but alongside that, I am running a hair donation campaign. Um, so anyone who's interested in donating their hair can reach out to me um, either on my Instagram handle, which is at Himakshi Shastri underscore, or they can email me on Himakshi at donatehair.org. Uh, and I will reach out to them with the hair donation criteria and we can take the process forward. Wow, sounds great. Thank you. So your family also donated the hair. Who was the first who donated the hair? Um, so I was the first one in my family to donate my hair. Um, and then I did encourage my younger cousin sister to donate her hair as well. They all were fine with that, no issues. Like, we are going to donate because you are you have such a long hair, and then just yeah. when you cut your hair and or you chop your hair, it's like you feel bad. But if you're doing for the good initiative, then it works. Yes, I think um, I, I've actually donated my hair twice now. Um, once in 2018 and once in uh, September 2020. I was actually the last COVID donator for my campaign. Um, and I think the times when I've donated my hair, I don't feel as though I've lost anything. I feel like I've gained so much uh, because I'm gaining seeing other people smile and there's nothing more beautiful than that. So you just donated your hair and all. I just wanted, I just wanted to know more about your experiences, like the by the that nineteen day process. How was your that nineteen day process? How people come to you and they just like I just wanted to know your experiences. Yes, for sure. Um, so the way the campaign worked was that every single day uh, for each of the nineteen days. Um, well, if the person who was donating their hair was in the UAE, I would set up a socially distanced meeting with them and we would uh, kind of conduct the hair donation process. And of course, if they were in other parts of the world, uh, then we would do a Zoom meeting and I would instruct them as to how they could donate their hair and we'd get the whole thing recorded. Um, 
And that's kind of how the process worked. Uh, 19 days, uh, 19 super happy days, I would say. And it's so good when you explore, when you meet, meet so much of new people in your life. And obviously for 19 days, you will be meeting such new people in your life who will be helping this COVID, uh, these cancer patients, all those things. Yes, definitely. And I think hearing every single one of the COVID donators' journeys, experiences, and why they wanted to donate, there was something so special about that. Um, and yes, just like you said, collaborating with like-minded people uh, was really an awesome experience for me. I just, I just wanted to add you are too small. Like the children of your age generally started with games, social media. Now, like, nowadays, they are more into social media. Because everyone, every second person, every children is having one smartphone on which they are just on social media or just they are more into games or something. but you are doing something really great for the country thank you that that I means mean, I'm so happy like I'm so happy to have so happy like, I can express myself thank you so much Pumika thank you so tell me more about like uh, you have been like you are just 14 year old and you have been so so open minded with all those things like with new ideas new initiatives what are your more plans to do um, I often get asked uh, as to what I want to do in the future and what I want to be when I grow up in specific yeah i just i just i just coming up what you want to be when you grow up Yes, um, I do get asked this question a lot as to what I want to be when I grow up. Um, but for me, I feel like I like living in the present and seeing what I can do now. Um, I know I am only 14 years old, but I do believe that we youth, us young people, we have such a great power. And if we use that power, we really can transform this world. Uh, and so I want to use my voice, my platform, and of course the things that I love doing, such as public speaking, writing, debating, reading, um, to make a positive impact, not only in my life, but hopefully in the lives of others. With that, adding to you, you are just not a social worker. You are much more. You have a, in, in in India, we say you are a chota packet for the mata. You got that? A small box with lots of uh, talent and all the things. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. I was just scrolling on everything. I was just researching about you when I came to know that, that you have written a book. You yes, are also with that. Yes, that's right. Um, so in 2018, I actually published my first ever book called Prized Words. Uh, and it's all about encouraging the use of manners amongst the youth. Um, I think words have the uh, power to inspire, but they can also destroy. And so I feel it's incredibly important for um, us young people, and to be honest, anyone, to choose our words wisely. Uh, and so I decided to use my love for writing, combine it with a uh, cause I'm incredibly passionate about to produce my first ever book. Yeah, so yeah, I was just like, how one can be so much talented <laughs> you are such a... and with that like you are an author you are a social act worker you are an environmentalist what more more hobbies do you have um for me the oh, what do you love to do more Yes, I, I think my greatest passion is definitely public speaking. Uh, I love speaking about causes I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, in fact, uh, I am a radio presenter on Pearl 102 FM, where I speak about the environment and different tips as to how young people can be involved in their communities in a sustainable way. Um, so really just using my voice to make a difference is something I enjoy doing. That's your main hobby or that's the, that's the one thing you love the most? 
yes. daily public and we are uh, giving your views on different topics or def- debating i i just uh, just you said that you love debating yes Yes, I definitely do love debating. I have been debating for um well, since year 5. So I believe that is about well, over 5 years now. Uh I've been debating for and so it's definitely um something I enjoy doing. Oh, wow. you're such an amazing person. It's so good like in your like in India it's a lockdown. Sort of lockdown where the uh, mainly main shops are open grocery items and medical shops are over or you are sitting at a home and you are meeting such new people in your life and seriously i am when my college student and you just motivated me do you motivated me actually to do such good things in my life i am also sir. related with some of the ngos we work for we work with that ngos ngos and we work for the rural areas those kind of things but you genuinely motivated me to do such more new things thank you that means a lot to me um and really when i can use my voice to make a difference uh that's the best feeling i can ever ask for so this question is like you motivated me so who motivated you like who is your biggest motivation or your biggest inspiration I think my biggest inspiration has to be my granddad, uh Dr. Ram Lakshani. Um my granddad has always taught me how to be fearless and go pursue my passions and my dreams. And I think uh really I just want to follow in his footsteps uh and I've really learned a lot from him. Yeah, that's so that's so true like your always elder one always motivated you with such a good vibe definitely um whenever i sit down and have a conversation with my grandfather he has well there's so much i can learn from him uh and all of his words are words of wisdom i like to say um which i can truly flourish from listening to amazing amazing to have and it's a good to live with joint families and yes absolutely so tell me, so tell me more about your, your book like covid onions is all about something we really appreciate but other appreciation thing is that a book that you wrote when you were i think you were 12 yes i was 12 Yeah, so we have the youngest author also with us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, How the idea came up, like writing the book. Yes. How the idea came up, and for that, who motivates you? Yes. Um so the idea behind prized words came up when I was collaborating and um uh, meeting with young people from all over the world. And I realized that the art of being polite and kind to one another was slowly but surely kind of eroding away. And that's something that made me a little upset. Uh, I feel like it's so important for us to be treating one another with care and respect. and so i wanted to take my passion for writing um and of course this uh cause i'm incredibly passionate about combine them together to produce prized words um also regarding who um inspired me to write my book my grandfather dr ram bakshani he is an author himself and he has written a biography so i wanted to um follow in his footsteps and uh write a book as well so like uh, how you uh, started with that like uh, just uh, seeing the youngsters all around or it was all about your personal experiences Yes. Um so my book wasn't about my personal experiences uh as it was a children's book I wanted to get some exciting characters in it. Uh we had Mrs. Panda, Mrs. Snake, Mr. Lion, different different characters. Um and I really wanted 
uh, this book to be a fun way in which children can learn an important message. Um, I think I started writing my book at the age of 10. Um, so it was a continuous effort. And by the age of 12, I was able to have it published. And I was invited as the youngest author to the Emirates Literature Festival, where I launched my book. That's so amazing. I'm, I'm like, I'm double excited now. Like we have the youngest, youngest mind in our channel. In our episode, we have youngest author in our episode. What more do you have? <laughs> That's incredibly sweet. Thank you so much. Well, how was your journey till dating? Your 14 year. How was your 14 year journey with all those things? Um, I think it's definitely exciting uh, when you can do something you love. Um, every day has something new, uh, which to well, and that can offer you. So definitely exciting would be my word to describe my uh, year being fourteen. Sounds great. Sounds great. <laughs> so now you know Hindi, a bit of Hindi. Yeah. Yes, I do know a bit of Hindi. Uh, I have Hindi baat karti hu. <laughs> Perfect. Speak something. Um, okay, so, um, Namaste, my name is Himakshi hai, or I am 14 years old. I am in Dubai and I am happy to say that every day is good. So amazing. You are such a cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Who who uh, uh, learn who teaches you Hindi? Um, I actually I wasn't exactly taught Hindi, but um, I speak Hindi. Um, well, since a young age with my grandparents and my family members. Um, so, and so I think I've learned through hearing. Uh, of course, when you hear your elders talk in Hindi. Um, yeah. you kind of learn by listening. So that's mainly yeah. how I... I'm so sorry. I wasn't able to catch that. No, have you been to India? Yes, I have. And I absolutely love visiting India. It is my home uh, and my country. And I hope I can visit it again super soon. Wow. Do you live in India? Um, so I live in uh, Gujarat. Wow, such an amazing place. <laughs> Thank you. So if this we are ending with this interview, I just am so happy with that to have you with us. So the youngest and with that I would like to conclude one more thing. What you want to speak to the younger people or the uh, Young age of nowadays, what message you want to give? Yes, for sure. Um, I really just want to end with a quote, which I think keeps me going every day, which is that small acts of kindness, when multiplied, can truly transform the world. So everyone, young people, uh, actually, whichever age you are, go out there, make someone's day and make a positive impact in this world. Such, such great words, such great ideology you have. And I hope like lots of young people of your age, of my age, and more of the uh, more of the younger people encourage it and start something new for the country. Thank you so much, Bhumika and Saral Bharat News. It was lovely speaking to you today. We do. We are very, we are honored to have you on our episode. We started this initiative, let's talk about young minds, where we bring the young minds from different, different countries who speak with us and we just wanted to let their journey and we really want you for the hope for the best and you have best in your life. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and keep inspiring. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.